March 2015, a joyous launch is held in Johannesburg for a new halacha program, attended by over 600 people. Rabbi David Hofstetter, Nasi and founder of the Dirshu organization, throws down the gauntlet and issues a challenge to the South African Jewish community. And it is no wonder that this community is embracing it enthusiastically. And now this community that has done so much and shown so much to the world in reaching out to Yidin and to Achtus in Yidin, if I may be so bold as a guest to make a demand, a request rather, to show the world again how one reaches out, how one comes together and joins Kal the Yisrael together in a unified effort to fulfill the will of Hashem. The response was immediate and enthusiastic. Hundreds attended the first tests and embraced the program joining Shirim or listening to recordings. But nearly five years later, how was the Dafayomi Bahalocha taken hold in the lives of South African Jews? I'm Charles Crust, I'm a mobile mechanic, driver around Joburg fixing cars. We started at Mizrahi. Mizrahi started a program. My name is Matt Klevansky. Um, I am married, professional, an audio producer and musician. About three years ago, I went to, I think it was their first CM of Dafa Yomi Bahalacha that they made in South Africa and felt very inspired to start the following program. When the Dishu Daf Bahalacha started, um, I thought I just wanted to get some inspiration into my learning. So I decided to come to the introduction and to just start the program, see what it's about. Well, it's grabbed me and uh, me and my Karchavrusa Glenn Beck, between us, uh, we've been learning the program together since the very first, very first Amud. Daf Hayomi Bahalocha is a program created by Dirshu, modeled on the highly successful Daf Hayomi Gomorrah program. Each day, a single page of Mishnah Brura is covered by tens of thousands of people worldwide. In South Africa, each participant has a unique relationship to how he follows the program. Every morning I go to shul in the morning, I go to sit in a daven, I come home, I sit down for with breakfast and do shul. I put, I put the earplugs in and I'm either listening to Rabbi Schnurb or Rabbi Glatt and I, that's how I do my do shul every day. I try to incorporate at least as much revision into it as new material every day, if not more. Um, and I think that has actually been the, the key to my growth with Dusha. I think we're on 57, 57 tests, um, the monthly tests, and then there's also the six monthly tests, and we've been consistent in making sure that we've um, done every test. I think that's what really drives the program. After school and university, I never dreamed that I'd be sitting there consistently every single month writing a test, and if I couldn't be at the test venue, writing it anywhere in the world. The success of Dirshu in South Africa hasn't just been about individuals. A key ingredient has been a network of live shurim in many shuls in Johannesburg and Cape Town that have brought a high level of alacha learning to hundreds. My name is Rabbi Dovi Goldstein. I'm the Rabbi at Orsamech Savoy. Um, I've been the rabbi here for the last 12 years. I'm also the MD of the kosher department, which runs the kashos here in South Africa. Um, thank God I've uh, got a beautiful kahila. Uh, got approximately 120 families, um, about 400 souls in all. So I started when the Dishu program began here in South Africa, the Dafyomi Balocha, and it's really been a brilliant, brilliant program where just had mass participation and involvement over the years. We run a Dirshu program in our Kahila and it has been very successful. Um, I give a Dirshu shear every morning. This morning I gave 1207th shear this morning. The reason why I know that is because each shear I record 
and I send the recording out to a list of 89 people that have requested it in the Kehillah, in the Kehillah, and out of the Kehillah, and out of the country, so it goes far and wide. My name is Rabbi Jonathan Fox. I'm the rabbi at the Hebra Kadesha, the group rabbi of the Hebra Kadesha. I love the work that I do at the Hebra Kadesha. About eight months ago, Rabbi Tabak approached me to suggest to give a Dirshu Daf Yomi Bahalocha to the residents of Sandringham Gardens. And I was quite reluctant to do so for two reasons. Number one, the residents at Sandringham Gardens are not used to this kind of level of shirim. And number two, the subject matter at the time of the Daf Yomi Bahalocha was a co complex subject which was Eruvei Chatzerot and I didn't think that the residents would take to it. I eventually agreed to try it out and I was amazed at the response of the residents at Sandringham Gardens. They completely loved the shirim and they completely took to the topics and got involved in an incredibly interactive shiur and it's been very successful, thank God. And um, each night we have about 13 to 16 men participating in the shiur. Aside from live shurim, the South African branch of Dirshu has also pioneered the use of digital channels to get the learning of halacha to as broad an audience as possible. The dirshu.co.za website has dispensed hundreds of thousands of individual shurim in the last few years. Another Dirshu South Africa project has been to create mobile apps for the learning of halacha. Aside from the Mishnah Brewer program, Dirshu also has a small Kitzer Shulchan Aruch program aimed at those wishing to learn halacha on a more basic level. And recently, Dirshu South Africa initiated a project to promote this program to members of our community. In October of this year, Dirshu South Africa launched an app to make the participation in this program as accessible as possible. But what effect does all this learning of halacha have on people's lives? I'm learning how to do the halakha or how, how to do anything in, in Yiddishkeit properly. It's, uh, it's, it's a guideline it's, and it's, it's great because it's everything you need to know about how to be a Jew. It, it talks to me. I don't know why. I just I enjoy learning halakha. Wow, so the influence on my life has been quite profound. Um, what I found going, going through the Shulchan Aruch with the Mishnah Bura is, is how it transforms the world around me almost into like a matrix of halacha. Um, so that it, all the different situations that you come across, you have kind of, you can recall these different um, opinions and ideas that the Mishnah Bura brings and that the Dushu explains so beautifully. Um, and it just transforms your life into living halacha and it gives them the strength to resist many of them the temptations in the workplace. So somebody said to me that they were joined the program and then they uh, wondered a little while, they veered off for some time and they felt tangibly the difference in their connection and the ability to, to combat the Yetzirah. They came back to the program and they felt the boost. So I was very happy to hear that uh, Dirshu is providing protection spiritually for Klal Yisrael. I think what's unique about this program is the actual content and the material that we're learning. You just can't go wrong with it. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't invest your time in anything more valuable and practical. It's something that I look forward to every day and it's in, in, it's in many ways one of the most meaningful parts of my day. It's very gratifying for me to be able to give over Torah and Halacha in particular, which I'm passionate about, to people who are so receptive and have not heard these ideas and these Halachot in their entire lives. It's fantastic because the preparation for the Shiurim um, enables me to get a, a good hold of the subject matter. I think one of the more valuable and fundamental things that Dishu has given to me is a kavirs in, in learning Torah while being part of the working world and the professional world. It's kind of a moving current with thousands of people that you are part of and that gives you motivation to stay up to date. But is the program exclusively for working men? Rabbi Saxton responds. Many of the grandparents are learning with grandchildren and they're doing the same program simultaneously, which is also wonderful to see. So there's not an age limitation from Bar Mitzvah right until an old age. 
the issue is appropriate. The men at the Shi'ur range from about 70 years old to 90 years old. None of them were privileged to attend a Jewish day school in their youth because there were no Jewish day schools in South Africa. So, how do participants manage to stick to the program over such a long period of time? What carries and motivates them? The learning and work and uh, family life and all the priorities play a big role but are very conflicting and it's a matter of finding balance between everything I do and all the challenges. But when you feel like the Daf Yomi in Gomorrah, that has a tremendous appeal because the whole of Klal Yisrael is involved. And when we are learning and connected, so we're in a different place. Our head's in a different place and our mitzvahs, our observance is in a different place. And therefore there's tremendous value to the day-to-day -day growth of an individual by being part of such a program. And please God, we'll have a large number of individuals completing all of Mishnah Buru together. So we're in Chayla K, and uh, we don't have that far to go. And uh, I think it will be a tremendous boost to many people to have learned Mishnah Buru together. And then the goal is, please God, we learn it again, because it's not, we're not tourists just going through the sites. We need to remember and know the halachas. So one certainly needs to do Chazora. So Be'ezra Sashem will complete Mishnah Buru and complete it again together in the Dirshu program. Tonight's celebration is about acknowledging the remarkable growth in Torah in our community. But more specifically, it's about the Daf Yomi program. In a few moments, dozens of members of our community will come forward to complete the entire Shas of Talmud Bavli, a staggering accomplishment for a community that only a few years ago was known as the Kiruv Center of the world. Today, our community continues to cement its place as an up-and-coming Torah hub in the diaspora of Jewry. I started with brochures. Um, I thought I would just do Chazorah for the Masechta um, and see how it went. And it was really enjoyable, so I thought I would just continue um, month by month, Masechta by Masechta, and see how it went. And thank God, almost finished the cycle. I've been an anaesthetist in private practice for about 20 years. And prior to that, I worked at Barragwanath Hospital in the trenches for seven years. I began Daf Yomi when the, program, the most recent cycle began. Uh, one evening I saw some flyers around Osameach and around Johannesburg and uh, the starting date was coming up and it piqued my interest. I was encouraged by going to see him um, at that time, Kenny Rapson, who uh, was being assigned the first time and explained the importance of holding on to the Daf and that it's a program you start every single day and you go and have Gomorrah in your life. So I started the program and you get through the first Masechet and uh, things are running smoothly. For many South Africans, the journey to Daf Yoimi was a long one, which makes the achievement of its completion all the more remarkable. When I was uh, younger, when I was 13, I was at uh, a Jewish day school, a bit of a religious Jewish day school. Um, that we did Gomorrah. The only word I remember from those years was Amarova. That, that's all I ever remembered. And I didn't do Gomorrah for, for years. I mean, I wasn't religious for years. And I started doing Gomorrah again in 2003. Very slow, very superficial. I mean, I remember struggling over one line of Gomorrah. It took me three hours to do. So the idea that I'd ever do the, the whole of the Shas it would be impossible. I, I never would have thought that I would have been able to do it, ever. So I never had a Torah upbringing, and hence I never studied Gomorrah as a, as a child. Um, so I didn't have much by way of basics. But as you become from, and you start to learn, and you put effort in, etc., and as a result, you you start to 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 feel the need that you need to start learning Gomorrah as opposed to Hashkofa. Um, and you start to sink your teeth in, slowly, baby steps. Um, I'm by no means independent, but I feel that I can, after years of being part of learning and part of Daf Yomi in particular, you feel a certain competency in the sense that you can absorb the shirim and perhaps contribute and perhaps argue from time to time. 
But what is it about Dafyomi that changed it from a nice idea in the 1920s to a mass world movement nearly a hundred years later? The answer is that Dafyomi is not a learning program, but a way of life. So the thing about the Dafyomi is that you start off and you're learning it day by day. But what I noticed after a number of years, perhaps, is that it became who you were. It integrated into your life. It, it became not over, overbearing in your life, but it became so much part of your life that it, it was who you were. You always had your Gomorrah on you. You go away on holiday, you've got your Gomorrah on you. It, it defined who, who I was. Part of the secret of Dafyomi's success is the steady pressure it asserts on one's life, making sure that it goes with you wherever you might find yourself. For Alan Lichnitsky, one of our Messiah Mim tonight, Dafyomi accompanied him to death's door and back again. At his Suda Sadoa a few months later, he retold his story. There is a family history that we have of uh, heart disease. But uh, I always made very sure to be healthy, to keep healthy blood pressure. I watched all these things, cholesterol, very, very carefully. So I was one of the slightest bit concerned this could be a heart attack because this just wouldn't be happening to me. Um, I later discovered this is a genetic condition and therefore you can try to be as healthy as you like. But if you've got the genes and your arteries narrow, you're in trouble. Anyway, so a lady said, you want to make kiddush? I said, no, I'll make kiddush later. It's no, no problem at all. Anyway, the sort of angels arrived. John Emmanuel and Daniel Foreman, and they were absolutely unbelievable. They put this horrible tasting discipline under my tongue, and they did an ECG, and they uh, sent it to ALS, and they said, you're having an MI. We will tell us what that means, but it doesn't mean Mississippi. <laughs> it means that I was having some form of a heart attack. Miraculously, Alan's full-blown heart attack came moments after he arrived in the emergency unit of Linksfield Hospital. The doctors were able to apply life-saving treatment and within hours, he was on the road to recovery. He describes what got him through the subsequent few days. Another very important thing that helped me in the recovery was my Dafyomi shear. Because when I was lying in hospital, stuck on the bed, the drips and things in me. I couldn't move, I'd lie on my back, I couldn't read. But Baruch Hashem, I had the drop box. It made me feel so normal again. I was just connected to Torah, and I heard the guys in the shir asking questions. And I felt, oh, I'm back in it with the guys, I'm back in the shir. And it's an incredible thing about Daf Yomi. People who do it will know exactly what I mean. That even lying in ICU, completely wiped out, you think, oh my goodness, how am I going to catch up? <laughs> So it's such a machai lying there. I thought I've got to start. I just got to start. So I was, I started and I, I think I fell asleep more than I learned. But I listened to the show over and over and over again. So hopefully I got out of it a lot. Also, there's a lot of good stuff there. So it really gave me a lot of chizuk as well. But aside from carrying one through crisis situations, what does Dafyomi do for the day to day lives of the participants and their families? For my family, um, the learning it has for sure it's brought the light of Torah into uh, more into into our into our lives. Thank God I've been able to see a lot of bracha in my personal life and my business life, which I can put down to learning uh, the daf yomi. I think my wife is proud of me. Um, my kids as well. We just had our fourth boy eight months ago, and I actually named him Maya after Maya Shapira. So, I mean, that was just a statement that we wanted to make how important the Daf Yomi has been in all of our life. I can sense that the family is very proud. Your wife really feels that it's her Torah as well. And uh, there's just a, a huge sense of pride. And from a Chinuch point of view, uh, it, it's something very, very special to be able to do. And your children can see that you're doing it. Not just the learning, but the, the effort and the commitment. And those two things, two ingredients, perhaps tremendous chinuch for your children. But do the participants hope their children will follow in their footsteps? Yeah, I, I, I think if, if they would get the enjoyment out of uh, Dafi Omi like I would, I think it would be great. 
Um, but who knows, maybe he'll be more into, maybe my sons will be more into Eon learning. Um, who knows, as long as they get Geschmack in their learning. But what gets someone to take the plunge? And once they have made the decision, how do they find the time? When I first started thinking about the idea of Duff, of Duff Yomi, I thought it would be almost impossible that I wouldn't have the time, maybe that I wouldn't enjoy it. But once you're in the Duff Yomi, there's nothing better in this life. That you do an hour a day of learning, that you elevated. Um, it's not that difficult to do. It's an hour, 45 minutes a day, that's it. And you get into the habit and it's great. The reason why I like Duff, Duff Yomi is, number one, I like structure in my life. That's where I work best. So the fact that I know I have to do a Duff of Gomorrah every single day, although sometimes it's challenging to find the time, at least I know what I have to do and there's no excuses. So as a, as a professional, the idea, the concept of doing Duff Yomi is ludicrous. It is crazy. It is unfathomable. And in fact, when I saw the flyers for the Duff Yomi, I thought to myself, wow, wouldn't that be amazing? And then in a moment of weakness, I probably said, it would be crazy, but why not? Why not? And I just decided to Nachshon ben Aminadav moment, just go and start. And of course, my main reservation was not the ability to understand it necessarily, but rather the time, because my schedules are very erratic. Um, I never know when I'm going to finish. And as a result, I was nervous, apprehensive about doing the Daf Yomi because of the regularity and the demand that it would have. But the amazing thing is that that never became a problem because what Dav Yomi teaches you is that you have a lot of time, even when you're busy, you have a lot of time in your life that you can find and use. And for example, one of the biggest places where I've done a lot of my Dafim has been at the hospital parking lot at lunchtime between an afternoon and a morning and an afternoon list. There may be 30, 45 minutes and I can, you know, sink my teeth into quite a piece of Gomorrah. Otherwise, I would have sitting in the tea room, schmoozing, and I'd love to have the seum at Elberton Netcare Hospital, but I don't think we're going to have it there. But be there as may, you find the time. So I've done a lot of Duffy on me in my car, sitting in a parking lot, and um, you just don't realize that how much time you can actually find to do, to do the Duff. Uh, going through life, we've got, everyone's got a lot on their plates, but it's a matter of finding balance and you never really find your balance. And there are times when you slip on something and other things move a bit forward and take priority. But if you've got the Duff and you hold on to the Duff, you know, and you hold on, if it's Halacha or if it's Gomorrah, whatever it is, if you t hold on to a program, it keeps you moving forward. People shouldn't look at this as being seven, seven, seven and a half years or, or seven years, whatever the program may be that you're on. It's a matter of just taking day by day, because if you take day by day before you know it, you look back and it's amazing what you can accomplish. But how much does Daf Yomi actually change those who learn it? I think the, 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 one of the things that has surprised me in Daf Yomi is how much I've actually retained the learning. Um, I'm not able to say which page that I've seen it on, but a lot of the time we see concepts and ideas that you know that you've definitely seen it before. In other cases, you remember it very well where you have seen it before. And in other aspects of learning, it helps a lot. For example, Chumash Rashi, that you, that you have seen it and very surprised to how much actually I have retained you start after doing Gomorrah for quite a while, you start thinking like the Gomorrah does. So I think from doing the Daf Yomi, um, it's helped me think in, in a Gomorrah type of way, which has helped my business a lot. Sure, Daf Yomi is a transformative experience. It, it, it truly, truly is. Of course, one's learning the Gomorrah, one's learning the Daf on a day-by-day -day basis. But in, in my opinion, it's it's the fact that it's so every day, seven days a week, including Yom Kippur, and it's, you're on the train, you're, you're moving along, 
um, of course, as I say, you're learning the duff for its own sake each and every day. But it's in, I think it's in the context of, of a most incredible energetic wave of, of people who are doing it together. You feel like you're, you're really part of something huge. And uh, it feels, yet at the same time, you feel it very personal, very individual. Like this is your Daf Yomi. The fact that Daf Yomi is worldwide, it for me inspires me and uh, keeps me going when things maybe aren't as easy. Um, the fact how many websites are dedicated to Daf Yomi. When you look at pictures, you look at videos, you look online, you look on Twitter, and so many people and so many websites and ideas and programs are dedicated, you know that you're part of a, a, a bigger group and the group carries, carries, carries each other um, is fantastic. I was in Cape Town a few months ago and I was uh, in a small shul there and I was doing Dafa Yomi by myself and a guy from America came up to me and he said, he's also doing Dafa Yomi. And, um, it turns out that, please God, when I go to New York next month, I'm going to stay by him. Um, we built a bit of a relationship, so everyone's on the, same, uh, on the same page at the same time. It's fantastic. For Dr. Khan, completing the cycle was not without its challenges. When he joined the Daf Yomi seven and a half years ago, he was convinced to join a shear learning at a slower pace of one amud a day, a single-sided page rather than a double with the intention of completing the cycle in 15 years. Nearly a year down the line, the shear stopped and Jason found himself stranded. Which meant that I was quite behind in terms of that I jumped ahead to where everybody was and that meant I had a deficit of quite a number of Duffim, 200 and something odd Duffim. And I kind of ignored it and thought, you know what, next cycle perhaps. And um, walking home from Shul one Motzei Shabbos, I mentioned this to Rabbi Zalza with about two or three years to go before the end of the cycle. And he said to me, well, you know, perhaps it would be nice to finish with everybody. Perhaps you should try and catch up. Quite a daunting thought, but when Rabbi Zalza makes a suggestion, you seriously consider it. And I did, and I regarded myself as being in um, Daf Yomi rehab. And I set a program and week by week, month by month, I slowly got through all those duffing and um, it kind of felt, felt great. So, what advice do the participants have for someone thinking about doing the duff, especially considering the fact that we are already 11 days into the cycle? Never too late to start. Never ever too late to start. Um, even if you don't start at the beginning of, the, of um, Shas, just come in and do it whenever you can. Um, I personally can't wait to do the next cycle. I can't wait to start seeing brochas again, Shabbos again, Erevin again, I can't wait. For me personally, Daf Yomi has been one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Um, it's changed my life in, in so many ways. Um, I'm sure it will affect other people as well, to the same degree if not more. Just try it, give it a try, you never know what happens.